Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much first for giving me the honor and privilege to be the speaker as everyone's coming back to the location and for joining us on Zoom where you are. I'm just going to ask that everyone take a moment to take a deep breath in on the count of three. In one, two, three, and exhale. Thank you. That's just going to give me the ability to wield all the energy. I'm going to start with myself. I lived. I want to say that one more time. I lived. And the reason that matters is because one of my roommates in the hospital didn't. She was 10 years younger than me, had the exact same cancer, and died six months, six weeks after I got out of the hospital. This is what it looks like to transcend a life experience and accomplish the impossible. Now, I want to explain to you what it means to me to accomplish the impossible. My oncologist told me the first time I had cancer, eight, maybe 10 years ago now, because it was back in 2010, that if it came back, I would be dead. So not only did I do that and go through surgery, nine months of chemo, and do a second impossible thing, because unlike most chemos that cause you to lose weight, I gained weight. I gained so much weight that by the end of my treatments, I had obesity issues. I was suddenly facing prediabetes. And my heart, from having gone through all of this, was affected. This last week, I hit my goal weight. I lost 50 pounds. That was my second impossible. That was my second impossible feat. And that's the one I want to highlight. The reason it matters is because only this week did it occur to me that I decided I had to accept that I was going to be fat after I had that illness the first time. Because no matter what I did, I could not lose that weight. I want you to hear me. I decided. I was oppressed by a tyrant and her name was Christy. I want you to think about that for a second. Because all those precious, beautiful words that were spoken before I got up matter. Because even though you said it with an immense heart and humor, when I speak, people listen. I don't ever take that lightly. And to me, that comes with an immense amount of responsibility. So I can only talk to you today from my experiences because it's the only thing I'm certain of. I can't be certain about your experiences. I can help you understand how I've transcended things how I learned to wield my energy, how I learned what it meant firsthand to stop the oppression of myself. So when we talk about being the change in the world, one thing that I learned firsthand was this, change scares the shit out of me because it doesn't guarantee something positive on the other side. But if I transcend, that eliminates my fear. So it's not by accident when you talk about the seed was about change and it disappeared. So you gave me the perfect setup to be able to offer us this opportunity to literally graduate to that next level. And that's the key in my experiences. You know, for those of you, oh, I'm gonna knock that fire open again. God knows I've done that before. Okay. For, for those of you who have, who have known me over the last 11 years or so that I've had my business, you know, there was times where everything was very like guide oriented or soul oriented or spirit oriented. And, and now all of that has had to graduate because the key element is my heart. Now, if you know me, you know I'm all heart, right? I'm a humanitarian, let's be honest, right? But I never owned that part of myself. I didn't own that I was a humanitarian. That part of me is what allows me to use my energy to connect with everyone. Because regardless of the consciousness, I connect heart to heart with everyone. Now think about that a second. When I connect heart to heart with you, that's what allows me to see your blind spots. Because our hearts have 
that brilliant, pure love. Well, when we're viewing ourselves through the perception of pure love, where's the negativity? Where's the anxiety? Where's the stress? Where's the overwhelm? Mm -hmm. It's not connected to our heart. That's connected to this part. <laughs> the part that thinks we see everything clearly. But you know what happens when I come over here because of the pandemic? I'm not protected because this shield is protecting me from germs that no one intends to carry. But just like I can see through this and you can see through it too, we're not shielded from having clarity because this allows that. The differences were protected. And when we carry stress, anxiety, overwhelm, all the emotional elements that feel heavy, it's like an imposter view shows up. Now, think about this for a second. It's an imposter view. It's not who you are in your heart. It's not who your soul knows you to be. So what is it? Where does that imposter you come from? It literally is your pain that you've been carrying for years, so long that it is normalized that you don't even identify it anymore. Now, I want you to think about that a second. If each of us is carrying pain that we don't identify hurts, what kind of energy are we vibrating at? We're not protecting ourselves because we can't protect ourselves when we are the tyrant who is oppressing ourselves and doesn't know it. I was shocked, shocked to discover how long I had been a people pleaser. For me, it went all the way back to being six months old. Did I have any conscious memory of that? Not at all. But the tools that I've been gifted to receive direct from consciousness to help myself are the very same tools that I share. And over the course of this last year, while everyone else had to slow down, I had to build up. I had to build up strength. I had to build up stamina because I didn't have any of that when I finished my treatments. So on the opposite side of that for me, I learned what it meant to wield my energy with the heart influence and humanitarianism that everyone else saw in me. But it didn't mean anything if I didn't see it. It didn't mean anything if I couldn't connect to that part of me. And it didn't mean anything if I used my greatest asset as a nuclear weapon against myself. I want you to think about that a second. I used my greatest asset as a nuclear weapon against myself. So how did I stop that? Because God knows, please take this. If you're a note taker, write this down. The most important question that you need to be asking yourself is this. Would I ever treat someone who was hurting the way I'm treating me right now? Because if you're listening to this, I already know you're a humanitarian. I know you're a heart-centered person, and I know you care about your impact on other people. I am certain of that. But what I discovered was that didn't mean anything in the end. Because what mattered was, what was my impact on myself? I have a lifetime of doing good deeds and being of service. And if you know me, I probably snuck in some way or texted you when you least expected it or sent you an email or called you or something. Right? That's me being me. But I was not showing myself that level of consideration or kindness or most importantly, respect. Now, if I didn't wield my energy with respect for myself, where was I vibrating? I was carrying an energy of disrespect, sharing that in the world. You know what I call that? A dirty sponge. Mm -hmm. I did not ever intend to be a dirty sponge, but my blind spots prevented me from recognizing that's what I was doing. So with this knowledge, I can't do anything the way I did before because I have transcended. If you were to ask me a year ago, where was I on my journey? I would have said I stopped transforming and metamorphosized. Because at that point, if you think about that little bugger, 
whether you're thinking about a caterpillar or a water beetle, let's work with the caterpillar a second. What happens to the caterpillar when it goes into the cocoon? Its fur falls off, its legs fall off, and the next thing you know, it has to create a whole new body. It has wings, but it doesn't know how to use those wings. So now it's gotta like find its way to break out of that darn cocoon. So that was great. I learned how to break out, but so what? I had this new body, but I didn't know how to use it. I didn't know how to wield the energy that came with the knowledge. I was listening to a podcast recently and, and, and a business coach said this, you only have to be one step ahead of the people you help. You know what you thought about that? Excuse my language for a minute. Hit mute if you got kids around. Bullshit. <laughs> Bullshit. Why? Because you cannot protect someone from themselves or their mistakes that they don't know they're going to make if you haven't walked in those moccasins first. If you are not far enough on your journey, and I say this with passion, you do not belong helping someone else until you can protect them from what you needed to protect yourself from. I got the serious face on. If you know me, I don't like that serious too often. So pay close attention to that one, okay? Because it's not enough to say I'm one step of where you, ahead of where you were. I don't want to learn from someone that has that limited amount of experience. I want someone who's been in the trenches who can tell me, Christy, if you do this or this or this, you are going to get stuck in sabotage. Go that way fast. And I'm kind of a speed racer. I don't want to go slow. So what does that look like for me? For God's sake, woman, hit the goddamn break. <laughs> But think about that, right? Now, yes, for, for all intents and purposes, I was born with an extraordinary gift to communicate direct with consciousness and energy in ways that continue to astound me. So, so yes, maybe you're thinking that you don't have that yet. But what I had to do to hone it and refine it was practice using it here first. And with that, the most important thing I had to do was accept a willingness to be wrong. Because I'm kind of stubborn and feisty, if you know me. And what I discovered was being wrong was most often my greatest privilege. Because the places where I was really stubborn, I didn't want to be wrong. Because if I was wrong, it meant someone would be harmed. Like back in my political days, believe it or not, I was a politician back in New Jersey. Believe that. 20-something years ago now, right? And, and because of my intuitiveness, yes, I had the ability to have vision and foresight. So what happened when I was right and no one wanted to listen to what I had to say because it wasn't politically the right thing to do because of money? People didn't listen. And I would pray, please let me be wrong. Because if I'm right, I can't protect the people. I live my life praying to be wrong because people didn't always want to hear the hard things I had to say. I prayed over and over and over to have someone else's vision and insight because then the world will be better. You know how fucked up that was? Mm -hmm. With the access that I have and the knowledge that I have, if I didn't learn how to own my humanitarian heart, how the hell do we ever get where I see we can go? Is it hard? Yes. Does it take grit? Yes. Does it require a little bit of feistiness? If you know me, you're going to get that. Yes. But here's the thing I want you to keep in mind. All it takes is knowledge. Because when you have the right knowledge and you learn how to wield your energy the way that you were born to do it, not my way. I don't want you going, oh, I got to do it the Christie way. Yes, take my methods, my techniques. That's why I have a business. That's why I share them, right? I do that to help you, to share it, but not to make little Christies. God forbid, that's not my job. My job is to make you be the best you that you can be so that the energy that you have to wield, that's your color in the crayon box. Now, my crayon box has millions of colors. I don't care if you're red. Cherry red, watermelon red, Bar red, take your pick, brick red, doesn't matter, clown nose red, they're all various shades. 
Well, when you respect, there's that key word, see, I had to learn this. When you respect that you were born to be that one shape and not another, then the world gets that. Because all the people that need access to your energy and your knowledge and your wisdom are seeking you. So if you aren't letting yourself be brick red or lemon chiffon or olive green, whatever it is, if you don't let you be that, then not only is that voice not heard, it's silenced. Now, what do you think about that? Because I silenced myself for way too long. I lived. But what if I didn't? What if I wasn't standing here today to share with you this knowledge? What if I didn't revamp everything I do? What if I didn't create this new energy accelerator program? What if I didn't create that to teach people how to build their energy? What if I didn't make my Propel Yourself Forward series so that people could learn how to stop self-sacrificing? How to stop misusing and abusing your self-authority as if it's a nuclear weapon against yourself? What if I didn't do any of that? What if none of that existed because I died? I can own that today. But my question for you is this. What are you here to do? What have you hidden from? Because we can't afford the cost of your fear and insecurity. And I say that from firsthand experience. We can't, as a world, afford that expense. I don't know what you have to offer because I'm not doing my thing right now. I'm talking about me, my experience, why I see and understand that I am here today. Because I wasn't born to hide my light. But here's the thing I want you to keep in mind is this. I was born with the capacity to shine like the biggest spotlight, like the sun. You know where I was? A 75 watt bulb. Think about that because you're no different. Do not put me on a pedestal and say, she did it and got there and I can't. I assure you, if you are here and you are listening to me, whether you are live or you are on the recording, the exact same thing is true for you as well as it is for every one of us as humans. We all have the capacity to shine like the sun. But our life experiences and where we have these blind spots, where we're carrying misnomers about who we are and what we're capable of and what we deserve, all of those blind spots create a normalcy that makes the world look like it does today. It's like earth is a dirty sponge. You know what that means? It's time for us to pull out our buckets and say no more, not on my watch, because I'm willing to clean myself up first. Because if I haven't been willing to do it first here, I could never stand here and talk with the authority and the influence that my energy can carry now. I want you to think about that a second. Because if you knew me back in my political days, I threw up every time I had to stand up in front of another person. Full blown, bleh, sweating bullets. I could only wear dark colors because God forbid, you know, you saw what I looked like. I was a mess. But if you watched me back then, you wouldn't have known it. Because apparently if you watched me, I spoke with the same confidence you hear in me today. In fact, the public meetings, they had to install the Christy cam because people complained they couldn't see my face when I was talking. I want you to see the difference. What I felt on the inside, my insecurity, my discomfort with myself prevented me from seeing myself the way that other people did. And I didn't know it. I didn't know it. I was wrong. Thank goodness I was wrong, okay? But I want you to try on that shirt for yourself. Wear that hat for a little while. Literally, let yourself feel. What does it feel like if I take off my clown suit? Why do I call it the clown suit? Because that's the part of us that feels ignorant inside and puts on the show. But what if we didn't? What if we didn't put on the show? 
What if we weren't afraid to say, I've been wrong. I learned. I'm a better me today than I was yesterday, but I'm not going to be as good tomorrow because I'm going to be better then than I am today. And that is my ultimate goal, to be a better me today than I was yesterday. So I continue to learn and I continue to grow. And every morning, God bless my husband, usually over coffee, we get our lesson for the day. Like every day. Like not even kidding. Like seriously, every day. Like I don't know how your morning starts, but mine starts with a walk. I'm up at 5.30, 6 o'clock some days. First thing is the exercise. Second thing is coffee and the lesson for the day. What do I need to learn? Because I cannot be of service from my heart to anyone else if I don't take care of me first. It's not putting myself in an arrogant way in front of anyone else. It's saying that I matter too. Also, in addition. And as a reformed people pleaser, if I don't take care of that first thing in the morning, I don't make the time. Because once my day starts, humanitarian, I'm all about everyone else. And it's not wrong as long as I take breaks to eat. I don't have to make sure the physical parts of me are taken care of. And for me, because of all this extraordinary talent that's all energy oriented, the physical realm, I haven't always appreciated. Do you know how ridiculous and stupid that is for me? I could have died. But I didn't. I lived. What do you think about that for yourself? You woke up this morning. You're still here. You're alive. You lived. You lived. You know what that means? The world's a better place because you're here. The only difference is are you going to choose to be who you were born to be? from that viewpoint of your heart in its purest measure with all the love inside you? Or are you going to let the imposter you take over and tell you some bullshit that's not even true? It's just based on your perception of life experiences. Now, if I didn't have the blessed and fortuitous opportunity to work with all the people and all the precious hearts and souls that I have over these last 10, 12, 15 years, I couldn't tell you Bottom line, we're all the same. We are all the same. Our insecurity stems from the same thing. I'm not that person who's going to be like, you got to pay for me to tell you what it is, because that's bullshit. I'm going to tell you what it is right here, right now. It all comes down to self-neglect. We neglect ourselves for completely different reasons based on completely different life experiences. So if you have spent years on a journey of self-love, self-care, and you're wondering, excuse my language again, sorry, I won't tell you mouth. What the fuck? Why isn't it enough? Because you don't understand how, where, and when you get stuck in self-neglect because you don't know what it looks like because it's normalized. And that is the foundation behind every program that I'll be offering moving forward because I can't work with everyone individually anymore. I just don't have the time. So I've had to take all these years of experience and knowledge and convert them into online programs where you can do it with the knowledge that you are acquiring to implement on your own with some support and assistance from me and Pete. Because at the end of the day, the only reason I couldn't do that sooner, nuclear weapon. You know why? People pleasing men, how to give you everything you wanted the way you wanted it. Doesn't mean it's what you need. Doesn't mean that's what you, what's gonna benefit you the most. Because how do you get a sense of independence and a sense of empowerment and a sense of, I got this, I have the toolbox. And when I need it, I can go back. You know what you do otherwise? Christy, what do I do? And don't get me wrong, I'm here for you. Best cheerleader you'll probably ever have. But. In the end, if you don't have a toolbox to go back to and go, okay, shit, I know we discussed this. I remember seeing it. Where do I go? Well, you need to know where to go. Because at two o'clock in the morning, I don't want your soul. And I'm like, what the hell? What, what, what's going on? Uh, I wish I was kidding. If you live in my house, my husband would be like, every day, she's like, what the hell? Who's, 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 who's? Because the people pleasing part of me still has remnants. Still has remnants. Not a fully clean sponge yet. 
I'd like to think that I can transcend in this lifetime to become that. I'm not there, but I'm far enough along to know what my self-neglect looks like, what my self-sacrifice looks like, where my blind spots are showing up. So with that, when I'm working with someone else and I go, oh, look at that, something new showed up for me that I didn't realize was there. Oh, you know what that means? Next morning. All right, what do I do about this? Here's my lesson today for coffee. Because I can't afford the price tag that comes with letting myself stay stuck or allowing myself the luxury of uncertainty. I want you to think about that a second. There's a luxury that comes with feeling stuck and uncertain. Now, this is where you might feel like I took you like a snow globe. I took you, I shook you upside down. You're like, what the fuck is she talking about? Feeling stuck? There's nothing about that that's a luxury. Yeah, but here's the thing. There is. Because it means you don't have to take action. It means you don't have to get to be in that spotlight. I don't have time to waste. Because today I lived. And I hope to God I have a long life ahead of me. But there's no guarantee. So I don't have the luxury of staying stuck. That's why I'm honored to say that my clients move forward at breakneck speed. I mean, imagine a two-time cancer survivor on your, on your side. No! Don't get stuck in that trap. But I'm one person. What are you capable of? Who needs you?